What's up everybody? Anthony here with Empire Music. We're out of the timeline here because during this video, I start talking about the specs and I realized after shooting it at a very odd time later on that evening uh, that I had said two of the specs, I had mixed up the modes and the clipping on the modes on this pedal. So the Earthquaker Devices Blooms, this is an awesome pedal as you'll see in the video. And I didn't want to recut the whole video because I think there's some good content into kind of exploring the pedal in real time with you guys out there. So mode one on this is symmetrical LED clipping. Mode two is op amp clean boost, I had that right. And mode three is asymmetrical silicon diode clipping. I had the symmetrical and asymmetrical modes uh, crossed up in my head whenever I set them. So I just wanna clarify that here at the top of the video. Uh, don't hate me out there, YouTube land. We greatly appreciate you watching our videos. And like I said, I think there's some cool content kind of exploring this pedal in real time with you. I just wanted to make that correction here at the top of the video. So without further ado, we will get back to the video. Thanks a lot. Oh. Fun one today, guys. What's going on? Anthony here, whoops, excuse me. Anthony here with Empire Music, empiremusic.com. Phone number at the shop, 412-343-5299. Don't get a chance to do a lot of pedal demos here, but one came in from Earthquaker Devices recently. It's very cool, caught my eye when I got the uh, notice. Wasn't allowed to talk about it to anyone. Uh, well, don't tell Earthquaker, but one person walked in the store and, my, and, it, and it, it slipped out of my my mouth there, I was talking about this thing coming out. So uh, this is the Blooms from Earthquaker Devices. They've, for a long time now, had a pedal called the Plumes, which they call a small signal shredder. Um, forgive me if I'm incorrect on this, but I believe it's uh, one iteration of the Tube Screamer kind of clone. I think it was a TS9. I'm really bad with like my pedal lineage stuff. Um, but this is a version of that called the Bloom. So they replaced the P with a B, B for bass, call it the low signal shredder. Not just for bass, although it, I guess you can kind of gear it towards that being a, a, an effects pedal. Drum machine, synthesizer, anything that you want to retain some low end, it's going to work really well for. Um, that's important because I love pedals. I'm probably in the, the triple digits as far as how many I own. Um, obviously, I don't use them all at once or uh, in fact a lot of them just sit on the shelf but it's good to have ones that I know and I rarely buy a pedal that says like bass on I think I have a made in Japan boss bass chorus that I, I really like my favorite chorus pedal but it is nice to know that I have something specifically in an overdrive fuzz distortion kind of realm that's going to retain low end it's going to allow me to maintain my supportive role as a bass player in a band. Uh, I'll very quickly relate a story where I was playing uh, locally here in Pittsburgh. It was a Pittsburgh Plays, every year we do a thing where it's like a, a tribute to a band or an artist. It was a Pittsburgh Plays McCartney thing and I got a great batch of McCartney pen tunes, which was cool. Helter Skelter was on there. I was so excited to play that tune because I just love it. I love the White Album. And I dialed in, I had the, um, Earthquaker Devices Black Ash Fuzz, and I dialed in like at home this like monstrous fuzz bass tone for, for parts of the tune, maybe even the whole tune, I don't even remember, it was a few years ago. I was so excited to use it, and I'm sure bass players can relate to this. You're like in a small room in rehearsal, it's killing, I flip it on every, like the whole band's like, oh, yeah, it's so rocking. We get on the big stage, and like we go to play it, and I click it on, I'm so excited, and like I'm gone. You know, like, you can still hear it, but like amongst high-gain guitars, I was just blending right in. It was like sapping out my low end. So it's nice to have something that you know you're going to be able to use and still maintain your role as a bass player. Because if not, then just don't use pedals. You know, you know what I mean? You got to, you got to, first things first, you got to play bass and be there for the rest of the band, support-wise. Um, so spec-wise on it, color scheme's cool um, with the, uh, yellow and green. Almost forgot what my colors were there. Yeah, I paint a lot too. I think I should know my colors. Um, level control. So that's like the amount of bass going into the instrument or into the effects box. Gain is the amount of drive. And then tone functions very similar to what you would think of as a tone like on your, um, on your instrument. So rolled all the way back is you're accentuating low and to me it always kind of sounds a little bit muffled. You go clockwise on it and it starts to bring out some of the highs and some of the, the crispness and the crunch on that. Now three separate modes. You have 
um, the LED clipping in one, um, asymmetrical LED clipping, and then in the middle you have an op amp clean boost on there so it doesn't clip at all. Then symmetrical silicon clipping on the far or the, the third mode on that. Again, I'm no expert when it comes to specs. I think I've made that very clear in multiple videos. If you see me do my new this week videos, you know, I'm generally wrong about specs a lot, but I am, I tend to think I'm very good at knowing if I like something. So outside of what all those types of clippings and types of diodes do, I'm not going to pretend like I'm some expert sit here and tell you all the ins and outs and the science behind that and exactly what's happening with the signal. I obviously I do know what clipping is on a signal, but that's for another video. Um, but I know when I like something, I know when I think it's something, something is cool and I know when it, especially with pedals, when it's usable. And I think that's the most important thing. Usable and also accessible. Can you get back to that tone? We've all had pedals too. Synth pedals uh, always come to mind where it's like, oh, I got a cool sound. And then the next day that cool sound can't be found. So dialable, accessible, usable tones. Um, what I was playing at the intro there was in that silicon diode clipping, which to me felt like the most loose it had like amount of compression on that to where I could dig in and nothing was getting too out of control gain wise. I always like that out of pickups. I like that out of um, any type of like fuzz distortion overdrive pedal, but let's go in to, and we're exploring this in very, very real time together here. I did buy this one already because I knew when I plugged it in a few days ago that I was like, yeah, I just got to have that. It's something that'll just make my board for sure. Um, but let's just go into uh, one here. And then you will notice, actually, let's start clean. You'll notice the gain jump on these is, is, is pretty considerable, considerable between the modes. So sort of buyer beware at that. Just know what you're getting into. And if you're flipping between modes while active, you might experience some pretty big gain jumps, you could possibly damage your amp in that case. So just to kind of know what you're doing with it. Check it out. So just clean. No, we're just bypassing the pedal. Right now we'll go to mode one, which is the LED clipping. Okay, so we can dial in a little bit more level on that. Like now let's check, have we matched the level? And again, I'm kind of walking through my process on how I experience a pedal too. This is exactly what I would do if I ordered a pedal, got it home. This is kind of the, the paces that I go through to figure out what I want to do with a pedal. So clean. All right, cool, that's a good amount of gain jump there. But now check it out. If I go right to mode two, which is the op amp, no clipping on it. really big gain jump. And then in mode three, it's going to be a, a step backwards in gain. So just on that alone, we're at the most like quietest setting. So it's kind of beware when you jump through these modes, how much of the gain difference you have. You go from, uh, let's say regular to loudest to softest moving one to three from my experience for what I'm getting here. Let's go back to one. So Got a nice unity kind of gain there from our clean tone. I'll show that again. You always want a little bit of jump, I feel like, moving into a pedal like this. Um, and we'll go tone right in the middle there. We'll go gain right in the middle. So right kind of at, I don't think that's unity, but that's just, you know, again, the 12 o'clock setting on it. So, uh, cool. typical what I would expect out of that. Um, not quite the compression that I experienced on the third setting there, but we'll, we'll get there on that. I like that. It's very nice. Now, my ears, what would I 
how would I experience this pedal? I want to know what my limits are. So let's go like full gain now. Just like, it's almost like breaking the pedal or just going like all the way, you know, let's turn everything up and kind of see where it's at. So let's go full gain on this. All right, so now we got like the reference point. That's where if I want really in your face, balls to the wall kind of tone, that's what we're gonna get. Let's take gain all the way back, right? So it's totally off. Very cool there. There's still a little bit of breakup on that, especially with a pick. That's where we start to get some sensitivity with it. So if I lay back on it, Where I dig in. That's really cool. That's a usable tone. Especially, I would roll some tone back off the bass there, maybe palm mute. If I wanted to kind of experience a little bit of like tube like breakup, almost like you're going direct into a board, kind of overdriving it. Wouldn't quite call that like a Motowny, uh, that like DI kind of sound to it, but you can kind of flirt with that a little bit. And that, in a mix, you're not even gonna pick up on that level of breakup on there. It's gonna sound cool. That, what it's adding to the mid range there is gonna be really nice in a mix. So again, just kind of how my mind thinks about a, a pedal once I get it, start figuring out some usable tones for me, especially in a recording environment, you can kind of do whatever. And then we'll roll some tone back and kind of probably get closer to what I was saying with like the old Jamerson kind of Motown-y thing. And I think we'll get a lot of that out of this pedal on all the settings. Very, very cool. I love that tone. That's, that's super usable for me. That's hip. I like that a lot. Let's go back. All right, let's, let's go all the way up on the gain or on the uh, tone. That's interesting. So I have tone all the way off on the bass. This is all, this tone knob to me, again, my interpretation of it, is almost overriding my tone knob on the bass. Pretty cool. So now I think about this again. This is how I approach a pedal. So if I have this off on a gig, right, and I'm playing no tone on my bass. Well, no, I'm sorry, my tone wasn't all the way off. It was on about. 30. Now let's see what happens. We just add this, if we just want to add like a new bass tone without adding a ton of distortion. Still adding it on there, but it's adding a little bit of top end to that. So I think my favorite tone there, I'm probably going to go middle tone, this is again setting one, middle tone, match level, whatever that ends up being for you. Go gain, probably a little less than halfway. A little tone on the instrument. See how sensitive that is too to what you do with your tone knob. Love that. That's a cool tone. That's very kind of Velcro-y, almost like fuzz territory with it. Still maintains that, that overdrive kind of bite to it. Very cool. So now let's go middle. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're going to notice a big... I'll demonstrate again that gain jump when we jump to middle, right? So here's one. Like 
can see Brent over there turning the knobs, turning things down. That's a pretty big jump. So again, just be aware that that is the case. So I'm gonna roll my level down. Let's try and match unity or match my clean tone. Go full tone on it. All right, nothing. Yeah, just a comfortable amount of gain jump on that. So this is essentially the op amp, uh, no clipping. This is where you're gonna get a nice, cool, clean boost on this. We get that gain way down. Roll some tone, we can actually add a little level to that. That's a nice color that it adds to the bass. Still a clean tone. I'm interpreting that you're adding a little bit of top end gain. You're adding a little bit of uh, kind of push and focus into the mid range on that. Very nice. That's going to cut through a, a band really well. Add a little bit of tone. Let's add a little bit of gain to that and see where we go. My finger's hitting that pickup on the bass, so if that's picking up on your end, apologize for that. Um, that's really cool. Again, very usable if you want to add just like that touch of bite crunch to your tone without going into full like breakup territory. Very cool. Also, if you're running a tube amp, uh, which I, I do not, that's going to hit tubes nice. So we can use this just as your boost pedal, feeding other pedals as well. Nice little hidden layer with this guy. Um, let's roll some tone back on that. I'm gonna add a little bit of gain. Love, love that. Love that tone right there for palm muted. That's so usable in a setting. If you go from playing, you know, here, that's no pedal, that's bypassing it. Add this in. I love that use of a, of a, of a boost pedal, of a drive pedal, because you wouldn't even know that was an overdrive at that point. Especially if you go from playing a, a, a part of the tune with fingers. And like, you're gonna go to palm muting without adding the pedal, you're gonna have a gain dip. Might not sit the same in the mix. You wanna add a little extra meat on the bone as they might say there. You're gonna pump that, pump that on when you go to palm mute. It's gonna actually bring up those mids and kind of compensate for that lack of attack, but you're still gonna get the effect of having the palm mute on that. Um, love that aspect of it. So now let's add some gain to it more. Let's add some tone. Might want to roll that level back then. So what's our gain jump like there? We go clean. A little much, but I'll leave it. Split the difference. Let's go gain un in the uh, 12 o'clock. I keep saying unity. I'm not even sure if that's what that is. Uh, roll some tone back. I think this would probably be a nice kind of uh, uh, SVT ish. Always think of like a, the, the Chris Squire close to the edge kind of tone. <laughs> Awesome. I think that's a pretty clean overdrive signal there. And obviously being an op amp with no clipping, that's telling me that's what that is. 
Now let's go to third setting where I notice the gain dip now. So here's setting two, mode two, I should say. Check it out. Considerable gain dip now, but that tells me when we bring level up, we bring gain up, we're gonna have that squishiness, that kind of compression, um, it, cause it has like, there's that headroom in there. And again, if my phrases aren't right, I'm sorry. It's just how I interpret things. And again, this is in real time, we're experiencing this pedal together. So let's go, let's add some level there. Again, we want to match clean. Actually go a little more. Uh, let's go, let's go middle again. So 12 o'clock on tone, 12 o'clock on gain. That's so, it's really aggressive. That's the silicon diode, which saying that I kind of start to relate. Again, don't really know what that, I kind of know what that is, but not really, not enough to explain it to someone in the right terms. When I, when it, someone says a term like silicon, germanium, LED, there's sounds that come in my head and this accurately kind of portrays what goes on in this uh, confused mind most of the time. So let's roll some tone back on that. Let's turn some gain down. Let's see what we get. Like how clean can we get it? Actually add a little level on that. I'm actually gonna add a little tone. So we're gonna go tone at nine o'clock. Gain all the way back, there's some breakup on that. I just asked you to try something different here. That's kind of cool. It's almost like that out of phase kind of thing. It could be a cool kind of a family that I'd use that all the time. Roll some tone on the bass back. Yeah, a little more usable there. Sounds like a broken speaker. Sounds like a dying battery. That's, I love that. makes you like shrink your speaker a little bit. So if you're playing through a 15, that makes it almost sound like you're playing through an eight. I love having those types of effects in there. Don't know that I'd use it all the time, but there's definitely a use for it. Um, now let's go tone all the way back on that. Let's actually add some gain, tone back. Where's that getting us? A little too muffled for my taste, so we'll add it on the bass. Still a little bit, so I want to add a little bit of gain to that. So that's like a lot of tone. There's a lot to unpack with this Blooms. I've only scratched the surface with it. Now again, I already purchased this, so it's going on my board. I'm gonna spend a lot of time at home dialing in some tones. Um, if you see me play live in the Pittsburgh area, it doesn't happen all that often, and I'm using effects. This will definitely be on the board. I can't wait to get some other effects going through it, putting some drum machines through it. Uh, putting some synths through it and things like that. I use the Boss SY200. Feeding that into this is gonna be a really cool thing. Um, Earthquaker Devices Bloom, super excited to introduce this out to you guys. It just came out uh, last week by the time you guys are seeing this. 
Uh, when we when I was filming it, we had some in stock. We will have more. So Earthquaker Devices Blooms. If you have any questions on anything I did in the video or need any kind of help with some pedal scenarios in your head, hopefully I can uh, impart a little bit of my um, probably somewhat uh, selfishly focused. Uh, wisdom on it. I wouldn't even call it wisdom. I just kind of know what I like and what works for me, but I'm always happy to kind of chat about that stuff. You can call the shop 412-343-5299. You can email me directly. It's anthony at empiremusic.com. Again, doing a pedal video. Don't do too many of those, but we're a massive Fender custom shop dealer playing one of our Empire 58P bases here. Um, but Fender, Fender Custom Shop, Gibson, Taylor, Martin, so some great acoustic brands as well. Uh, feel free to reach out with any questions. Appreciate you watching. Thank you.